The rain is over and gone. The flowers appear on the earth. The time of the singing of birds has come. And the voice of the turtle is heard in our land. That was the late Ernie Harwell reading, The Voice of the Turtle. It is a Detroit Tigers tradition for this recording to be played before the first spring training game of each season. And if there is one thing that baseball fans and Detroit citizens understand, it is tradition. But this tradition has ideas of new growth in an uncertain future. To understand this future, we must first examine the past. The city of Detroit was founded in 1799 by French explorers and fur traders, and by 1830 it was a booming city in the Midwest attracting immigrants from all over the world, and the Irish put down roots west of Detroit in a neighborhood called Corktown. With Corktown being less than two miles from the central city, the neighborhood quickly became a residential area. In 1896, baseball came to Corktown when George Arthur Vanderbeck built Bennett Park at the corner of Michigan and Trumbull Avenues as the new home for the Detroit Tigers. In 1901, the Tigers joined the major leagues, and in 1912, Frank Navin bought the team and constructed Navin Field on the same site as Bennett Park, but it was built out of steel, unlike its wooden predecessor. In the late 1930s, Navin Field was renamed Briggs Stadium and expanded both in size and in scope. Cherry Street was closed and extra seating was added to the stadium, creating a jewelry box ballpark similar to Fenway Park in Boston, Wrigley Field in Chicago, and Old Yankee Stadium in New York City. The Detroit Lions also began to play at Briggs Stadium, and would continue to play there until 1974, when they moved to the Pontiac Silverdome. It was not until 1961 that Tiger Stadium became Tiger Stadium, when the new owner, John Fetzer, renamed the ballpark. After a fire in 1977, the city of Detroit purchased the stadium from the club for $1, and took over the maintenance and operations of the stadium in a deal finalized the next year. For the next 20 years, other baseball stadiums were being improved or replaced by newer facilities. This was felt in Detroit as well when it was announced that the Tigers would be moving to Comerica Park, built two miles from Tiger Stadium. On September 27, 1999, the Detroit Tigers played the club's final game at Tiger Stadium. Over the next seven years, the old ballpark sat empty and was falling into a greater state of disrepair. In July of 2007, the Detroit Economic Growth Corporation, the section of the city government that controls the use of Tiger Stadium, announced that the entirety of Tiger Stadium would be torn down. This angered many fans and Detroit citizens that wanted some of the stadium preserved for historical purposes. Shortly after the announcement for demolition, the old Tiger Stadium Conservancy was formed to raise money to preserve some or all of the stadium. The Conservancy was trying to find grants and tax breaks for the project, but the most important piece of funding was a federal government earmark for $3.8 million. But all the fundraising and effort were for naught on September 21, 2009, when demolition on Tiger Stadium was completed. Originally, the city of Detroit expected to receive money from the demolition of Tiger Stadium because of the high cost of scrap. But when the economy took a turn for the worst in 2008, the price of scrap plummeted and forced the city to pay $250,000. Many thought hope was lost for the Tiger Stadium lot, which represented Detroit as a whole. But in 2010, a man named Rob Derry showed that the lot still had potential and could be preserved and formed the Navin Field Grounds Crew. This group is made up entirely of volunteers that maintains the grounds that the city of Detroit treats like one of the many other vacant lots in the city. But not all powerful groups in Detroit forgot about the lot that meant so much to so many. GM, after reading articles published by ESPN, put together a plan to restore the field. This plan was going to be fully paid for by GM and would allow Little League games to be played on the lot. 
But when GM proposed this plan to the Detroit Economic Growth Corporation, they rejected it, implying that the land was more valuable for future development. Many people saw this as the final sign that the city of Detroit, and more specifically the DEGC, were inept at managing anything. These citizens understood the value of the land if it was being developed, but when the plan was turned down, there were no talks being held about potential deals to develop the land. And this is where most people saw an issue. Even the Detroit Tigers have seemed to have forgotten about the lot that was their home for 103 years. On April 20th, 2012, no statement was made about the 100th anniversary of Navin Field, let alone a celebration of any kind that could have brought renewed interest to the corner. Instead, the Navin Field grounds crew stepped up to the plate again and hosted a barbecue at the lot. But there is hope for the future as the DEGC has approved two plans that will coexist on the lot. The Detroit Police Athletic League will be building its new headquarters on the lot with a plan to preserve the field as a multi-use field for youth sports. Another plan, entitled The Corner, will be built on the edge of the lot and will bring mixed use to the area with retail and residential space. Listening to Ernie Harwell is what provoked this conversation, and an excerpt from Ernie Harwell is the best way to conclude it. This is his sign-off from the last Detroit Tigers game he called. He remembers the past, but encourages the future, and his message could also be a message on behalf of Tigers Stadium. The Tigers have just finished their 2002 season, and I've just finished my baseball broadcasting career. And it's time to say goodbye, but I think uh, goodbyes are sad, and I'd much rather say hello. Hello to a new adventure. I'm not leaving, folks. I'll still be with you, living my life in Michigan, my home state, surrounded by family and friends. And rather than goodbye, please allow me to say thank you. Thank you for letting me be part of your family. Thank you for taking me with you to that cottage up north, to the beach, the picnic, your workplace, and your backyard. Thank you for sneaking your transistor under the pillow as you grew up loving the Tigers. Now, I might have been a small part of your life, but you've been a very large part of mine, and it's my privilege and honor to share with you the greatest game of all. Now, God has a new adventure for me, and I'm ready to move on. So I leave you with a deep sense of appreciation for your longtime loyalty and support. I thank you very much, and God bless all of you.